Welcome to Managing MDS. I am Dr. Joseph Corey. I will be discussing chronic myelomonocytic leukemia or CMML, specifically what hematopathologists do to properly identify and subclassify CMML. CMML is a complex disease. It is defined as, in, as a disease with both myelodysplastic and myeloproliferative features in which monocytosis, an increase in the relative and absolute monocyte count, is a hallmark feature. The World Health Organization, or WHO classification of 2017, has retained most of the major diagnostic criteria of CMML, which includes an MDS MPN with monocytosis in exceeding 1 million monocytes per microliter and 10% of the white blood count. CMML, by virtue of its um, uh, core characteristics of having myelodysplastic and myeloproliferative features, is uh, really defined, its biology is really defined on the basis of the complement of genes that are mutated in a given patient. Mutations in genes such as TET2, ASXL1, and EZH2 typically confer a dysplastic type biological picture, whereas mutations in cell signaling pathway components like JAK2, NRAS, KRAS, and CIBL or CBL confer a myeloproliferative biology. So in as much as these mutations happen simultaneously within a given patient's bone marrow, they confer either a myelodysplastic dominant CMML or a myeloproliferative dominant CMML. The new WHO classification suggests that we distinguish between MDS CMML and myeloproliferative CMML on the basis of the white blood count. In addition to distinguishing between MDS and myeloproliferative CMML, CMML can be subgrouped based on the bone marrow blast percentage, actually a combination of the bone marrow blasts and the peripheral blood blasts into CMML0, CMML1, and CMML2 based on cutoffs that you can see on the screen. Again, these are tools to subclassify patients uh, in accordance with their uh, projected prognostic risk group. Uh, they are uh, used to uh, determine sometimes uh, treatment selection or whether treatment is going to be uh, uh, initiated or not. Here I would like to show you an example of a CMML. This peripheral blood smear is from a 77-year-old man who presented with leukocytosis of 14.9 thousand white blood cells, anemia of hemo with a hemoglobin of 8.5, and an elevated platelet count of 861,000. As you can see, the percentage of monocytes is 12%. As you look at the peripheral blood smear as a hematopathologist, I would recognize the presence of immature and atypical monocytes. As you can see in the bottom portion of the image, there is a monocyte with a gray portion of the nucleus that's punched out. That is a nucleolus. A nucleolus is a feature within the nucleus that indicates immaturity, and it typically should not be there in a patient uh, with a reactive process. And so in this case, it really raises the possibility of CMML, especially when coupled with an elevated platelet count and, a, and an elevated white count. This patient eventually had a bone marrow evaluation that showed dysplasia in all three lineages, in the megakaryocytic lineage, in the granulocytic lineage, as well as in the erythroid lineage. This is an image from the patient's uh, bone marrow core biopsy which was decalcified and examined under the microscope as well. You can see here that the bone marrow is very hypercellular uh, with a cellularity of about 90%. In a patient who is 77 years old, this is in excess of one would normally typically see. 
additional workup included molecular diagnostic evaluation, which reveals which revealed the presence of a mutation in the NRAS gene. Uh, this mutation is known to be an activating oncogenic mutation. Cytogenetic analysis also revealed the presence of a karyotype that is aberrant with the deletion 7Q, a feature that is uh, not uncommonly seen in CMML. As a result, the full workup allowed us to establish a diagnosis of CMML with 7% blasts. At this blast percentage, a CMML1 subgroup would be appropriate per current WHO criteria. I want to thank you for your attention and for viewing this activity. Thank you.